Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, September 2nd. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Notre Dame game is in one day. Yes, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow evening, but it's fine. The show's tomorrow morning. The game's tomorrow evening. We'll get into it. The game against Michigan in 85 days. With this being an Ohio State game week and a pretty big one at that, it seemed like a great time to let the rest of the folks at BuckeyeHuddle.com kind of flex their muscles a little bit to show you what you're missing out on if you're not a member. Tuesday, we had an Alex Gleitman, one of our lead recruiting analysts. Wednesday was Kevin Noon, who covers the team. Thursday, it was Tony Gerderman, who also covers the team. Today, we're taking a deep dive in some schematic storylines with one of our X's and O's gurus. His name is Ross Fulton. He is everyone's smart football friend. Ross, thank you for being here. Happy to be here, Tom. So, you know, we have talked a lot about the Ohio State defense kind of all throughout the last nine months or so since Jim Knowles was hired. I think a lot of people are expecting some big things from the defense, but, you know, you listen to him talk over the last week or so, you know, we don't know Jim Knowles that well yet, but he sure sounds real confident in that defense. I guess, how confident are you that they're going to be somewhere between very good and great on Saturday? Great's a high bar. Uh, I, I've, I've been pretty confident throughout uh, that they're going to be uh, very good this year. Um, you know, you have, I think people probably still underestimate uh, how big of an impediment uh, the scheme was last year compared to, you know, just your average defensive scheme in major college football. Uh, and so, uh, you know, very, very few players that were going to get look good in that scheme last year. And then they, they were just so young. I mean, Ohio State has nearly everyone back on defense, which is why when you start, especially at some positions, they're, you know, at least too deep in, in guys that have, played significant snaps. Um, so when you put that together with uh, a competent defensive coach, you know, I don't think there's any reason to expect them not to be very good. The next question, of course, you know, you think that's, so that's the baseline expectation for Ohio State. The next question, of course, is matchup. You know, Notre Dame doesn't seem like they have, you know, fantastic wide receivers. They, don't, they are not at the top of the list of best wide receivers and units in the country or anything like that. But they should be somewhat physical as an offense. I just saw PFF at Ohio State as the number one offensive line in the country, and Notre Dame is the number two offensive line in the country. You know, we've talked a bunch about tight end Michael Mayer all, all week. Is Notre Dame to you a good matchup or a bad matchup for this Ohio State defense in terms of personnel and scheme? I think it's pretty good. It, it's somewhat, you know, um, so in the past, the past couple of years, I would have said that, you know, I expect Notre Dame to use quite a bit of QB run game. Um, and, you know, that has been a, an issue with the single high framework, but Jim Knowles, by contrast, has had a lot of ex- success against it. You know, he likes to overlap gaps. He likes to use the three safeties and then bring them down so you don't know who you're reading. Um, you know, Notre Dame, I think, might be able to have some success at least early, you know, with some short completion game, sort of taking advantage of, like, Knowles, you know, when he, he likes to go like five across and kind of give some cushion so he can disguise coverage, but that can give up some underneath routes. Um, but, you know, I mean, his defenses have tended to have a lot of success playing the run. Um, and so, you know, uh, you know, we'll see how Aussie's defensive tackles are, but his, you know, he's going to, as we've talked about, he's going to spill and kill and bring safeties down from different angles. And he's generally good at stopping the run. You know, they can give up some big plays, uh, but I'm not sure Notre Dame has the ability to, to generate those. I mean, I think Michael Mayer may be able to. Um, and, you know, one of the, the things that I'm most interested in seeing is how does uh, Knowles handle Mayer and 12 personnel in general? Because I think that's really where there's some flexibility in this defense. Obviously, I would say, you know, against base, uh, you know, three wide receiver, one tight end, one one running back set, uh, Tanner McAllister is your starter. And coincidentally, McAllister played pretty much the entire game against Notre Dame last year uh, in the Fiesta Bowl. But then you have, you know, on the one side of things, you have Court Williams, who you can play if you want a, a bigger body. Uh, you have Latham Ransom, who sort of straddles the uh, between Williams and McAllister, who can is kind of could be a safety, but has obviously covered a lot and has been, you know, Everyone uh, can't stop raving about him at the moment, uh, obviously. So it'll be interesting to see. That's where I, I sort of see them doing some different substitution patterns. Uh, and so Notre Dame will be, a, at least for those of us interested in that kind of stuff, a good early 
game to see how, how he's going to handle those different situations. And then, so that's the Ohio State defense. On the other side of the ball, when Ohio State's offense is on the field, Notre Dame's defense is on the field. That's how this typically works. We have talked a bunch about the system that, that Knowles has run and wants to run. Marcus Freeman, something of a defensive guy himself, has been a defensive coordinator for Cincinnati and Purdue and Notre Dame over the years. He has Al Golden, uh, someone who Ryan Day coached with way back in the day at Temple for a season. Ryan Day basically said, like, yeah, that was a long time ago, man. So it didn't sound like that was going to be a big impact on the game, but kind of an interesting little sidebar there. Um, you know, what style of defense, like what, what should Ohio State expect from Notre Dame in terms of what they want to do on defense this this uh, week? Well, this <laughs> this is another one of those, well, first game kind of situations because Marcus Freeman, um, you know, since his time with Luke Fickle at Cincinnati, he's really been like a three down tight front guy. He doesn't, he didn't last year do as much of the three high safety stuff as Cincinnati does or as Knowles does, but you know, you kind of get like the three three five with sort of a hybrid player on the edge and the tight front and, again, squeezing down inside. Um, that's not what Al Golden has done in the past. Uh, he's more of a four-down guy. So, you know, how they how they marry that is anyone's guess. I guess I'd be surprised if Freeman goes away from what he's been doing. Um, but, you know, I think Ohio State has to be prepared to see some four-down fronts as well. You know, it feels like whatever Notre Dame does on, on defense, everyone's just sort of assuming the Buckeyes are going to be able to throw it a ton this weekend and pretty much all season, I think. It has been a real point of emphasis for Ryan Day this week, from I think a couple other folks we've talked about this week, about how well are they going to be able to run it. So looking at that Notre Dame defense, is this a defense that you think the Buckeyes are going to be able to consistently run the ball, including in situations, you know, Justin Fry, when he first got to Columbus, said, when the whole stadium knows it's third and two and they want to run it, they have to be able to run it when the whole stadium knows what they're going to do. So when everyone everyone in the stadium knows what they want to do, is this going to be a defense that Ohio State can run the ball against on Saturday? Well, you know my ordinary contrary answer is that if everyone knows you're going to run the football, don't run the football. <laughs> you're throw the football. Uh, that was the problem last year, despite what people think. It was not because of the offensive line or playing four tackles or who's tougher or who can rub more dirt on themselves. Uh, it was that Ohio State kept getting themselves outnumbered in the box, um, which is why, you know, for instance, that fourth and one touchdown throw to Marvin Harris in the Rose Bowl was so easy because Utah was playing cover zero. So my advice would be to not listen to everyone. And if Notre Dame wants to play cover zero on third and short, um, I would throw the football to your uh, future NFL wide receivers uh, with your future NFL quarterback. Um, you know, that said, you obviously want to be able to run the football uh when the situations present themselves um you know i i mean i again first game i cannot think of a first game that i've ever watched for any football team that doesn't have sort of some sloppiness and obviously that applies both ways so like i'm not automatically assuming that ohio state's passing game is going to be clicking on all cylinders either um you know I, i think as a general matter i would like um you know i'm looking for ohio state to probably to hopefully have a little bit more run game diversity, which is another thing we've talked about in terms of the, you know, they got really dependent last year on just running mid zone and wide zone. And, you know, I think having a little gap uh, run concepts such as counter will will help them develop more of that consistency. And then I just think, you know, Travian Henderson taking a step forward as a sophomore and and being a little bit uh, more efficient at, at breaking tackles near the line of scrimmage as well. So if you know one stat, if you were to tell, if I was to tell you one stat from Saturday's game, I come from the future and I say, I will tell you one thing about this game other than the score. What is it that would tell you the most about who's going to win this game? You know, is there one stat that, uh, you know, if Ohio State can, uh, you know, throw for X number of yards or, you know, is it time of possession? I bet it's not time of possession, but is it time of possession? Is it, is it, uh, you know, is there a, uh, you know, Ohio State did this in this one particular statistical category and Notre Dame did that. What is the stat that would be maybe the most instructive to you in terms of knowing how this game is going to kind of play out? Tom, it hurts me that you would even joke about time of possession being that stat. Um, I'll give you two. Um, who who has the big no, greater number of explosive plays? I think that's definitely a stat Ohio State has to win. And then I think the second one is how many points per possession uh, inside the 40-yard line does Ohio State have? 
If it's, uh, you know, I, I think for as good as Ohio State was on offense last year, I think they were a bit inefficient uh, in the red zone uh, in particular. And so, you know, they need to uh, do a better job this year of, of upping the number of uh, those possessions that turn into touchdowns. Thank you, as always, to Ross for being on here. Always some of our most popular shows when Ross is on to uh, explain football, make you sound a little smarter at your tailgate on Saturday morning. Always uh, always a fun time to talk to him, and people seem to love that, so I'm sure we'll have plenty more of Ross uh, all fall long. You can also find plenty more of Ross at BuckeyeHuddle.com. He is uh, he is one of our, one of our, th- our three X's and O's gurus. He and Justin Whitlatch and Devin Radcliffe all on there answering your questions. There's a whole thread dedicated specifically to X's and O's. So if you have a question, if someone asked you something last week and you think, you know, oh, oh I wish I wish I knew the answer. Who could I ask? Well, get on the uh, huddle board at, at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Ask our experts. They will answer. They will let you know. And then you can go back and say, everyone knows that. Do you, did you not know that? Everyone knows that. Come on. Or get on my level. The way to be, get on the, way to get on, uh, the highest level you can is at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We'll have a, a really fun, busy weekend coming up. Tony Gertem and Kevin Noon and I are planning to do a live episode of the Buckeye Weekly Podcast on Friday. Hope you kind of kill some time at the end of the week as you are uh, watching the clock slowly tick around until 5 o'clock and you can, when the weekend starts. And uh, as you can kind of count the, count the hours now to the Ohio State-Notre Dame game, we'll be out at the stadium on Saturday. Lots of pregame coverage, lots of postgame coverage. You can follow it all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. You can follow the Buckeye Huddle YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed there. Make sure you hit the bell there to get notified when we go live. There's going to be a lot of coverage, a whole lot of stuff to talk about on Saturday. You're not going to want to miss any of it. So that's all at BuckeyeHuddle.com and on the Buckeye Huddle YouTube channel. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.